Nowadays, there is a massive concern among data visualization beginners. Do I need to learn how to code? Short answer, no. Long answer, there are so many other skills involved in the design of visualizations and somehow I have never heard anyone ask, do I need to learn semiotics or do I need to work on my creativity? Hi, welcome to Short Bites. My name is Salome and I'm here to unravel some thoughts about data viz. Today's topic isn't quite a topic. It's more like a ramble of questions about tools, coding, design, creativity, and the connection of all these things to data visualization. The data viz community is facing a very strange paradox today. At the same time, we all seem to want to be a unicorn and have all the skills to make visualizations. And we also seem to believe the entire visualization design process depends on our ability to code. If you take two minutes to consider both these statements, they turn into crazy assumptions. Sadly, sometimes people seem to forget what lies beyond visualizations, dashboards, or any simple chart. If we don't forget what they mean, concepts like visibility, accessibility, and user experience are absolute keys to a successful visualization, either in digital or in print. But other essential considerations come even before all that. What about the story, literacy, semiotics, and visual perception? What about the history and the millions of visualizations that have already been done? And most to the point of this video, what about creativity? Somehow, students and enthusiasts today are in a rush to learn how to do something in the fastest and most efficient way possible. There's actually a perception that you go from data straight to design while designing shards. And when creating a visualization turns out to be much more complicated than this, there is a lot of disappointment. Ironically enough, everyone also knows how complex and multidisciplinary data visualization is. You have statistics, you have data analysis, you have information architecture, you have storytelling, you have design. So why are people obsessed with learning code above all other visualization related skills? Here, I must be the bearer of a very unpopular opinion. Coding is just a tool, not the end all be all of visualizations. Remember how flash was all the rage in 2010 and now most of that work is gone. I know what you're thinking. But coding languages offer you so much freedom. There are so many possibilities. Either that or this woman knows nothing. <laughs> of course, design software and all sorts of applications were created so that more people could design visualizations without much of a learning curve. And that's great. This means that the visualization is ever more democratic and accessible to a larger group of people. But on the other hand, we have to admit that about 90% of visualizations look the same. Not all pie charts and Venn diagrams need to be artistic masterpieces, of course, but a portfolio visualization or any content that aims to convey a message should at least be memorable. There are two reasons why most visualizations end up looking the same. Either we replicate the process of those we admire or find an approach that suits us and repeat it over and over again. Both of these are very legitimate ways of working. However, it seems that all we hear about today in the DataViz community is how to hack your visualization to look cooler or how you can replicate this or that chart. They say imitation is the best form of flattery, but who are you as a creator when you can't stop imitating and start creating on your own? Remember, we are the ones to do complex and intricate visualizations just for the thrill of it, so it's pretty strange that we repeatedly take the same approach to do them. As I came to understand in the last few years, Having one single process to many briefings and problems is actually a relatively common problem in the life of a designer. Sometimes we just get very used to doing the same steps to achieve a result we know will look good. Is that what becoming a professional entail or is this just plain old self-indulgence? If there is a set of colors, typefaces, illustration and photographic styles I go along with, why would I take the time to change it? Having a process and strong personal style is not bad and not at all the opposite of creativity. Not only do you need to be creative to develop a unique style, but you also need to be creative to find new solutions and approaches inside your own style. We all take inspiration from James Serra photographic visualizations because of their discipline and humanity. We all follow Mona Shalabi on social media because her graphics are hand-drawn but incisive. We listen to loud numbers from Miriam Quick and Duncan Gere because there's nothing like it. And we love the work of these people because they take chances and make unfamiliar choices in how they present the data. One thing about tools, coding languages or any other 
is that they have a limited number of possibilities. Or they have a massive number of options and we don't ever get to experiment with. But one thing that creativity does not have is limits. Who can say that the tool I use the most isn't actually preventing me from exploring other solutions that it doesn't allow me to choose in the first place? And, after a time, do I only make decisions based on the options I am presented with and the outcomes I know I can get? It is often easier and quicker to go around your constraints than to go looking for some other way to fix them. But you would be surprised to know that forcing limits upon yourself and your practice is indeed an exercise in creativity. Because it forces your brain to go down a path it doesn't usually go through. You can fight me all you want, but creativity is a skill. And, like any skill, developing it takes work. Stepping out of a system we know is functional just to experiment with something more colorful is uncomfortable, especially when you just got used to one specific tool or took us a long time and effort to learn it. It may feel like I'm scolding you, but I'm super guilty of this as well. If someone takes my illustrator away, you may bet that I will hunt them <laughs> and I will kill them. So, on practical terms, what's my advice on being creative while creating visualizations? First, do something that you've never done before. You can either design a chart by hand, take photographs, or force yourself not to use a bar chart, a scatter plot, or a pie chart. Two, research. The history of DataViz is filled with creative representations of data. Before templates and D3, people took a lot of time and effort to develop exciting and novel ways of presenting the information. 3. Ask for help and feedback. Not from people who will say what you want to hear, but from people who know will tell you the truth. The Data Visualization Society Slack, for example, is great to find people to give you tips or help you in solving your visualization problems. 4. Immerse yourself in the subject of your visualization and look for visual metaphors and cues. This is one of the best ways to get inspiration besides replicated pre-existing visualizations. And finally, be brave enough to fail and to start again. Not all the methods you'll try will end up in decent visualizations, but that's the whole point of design, doing, testing and trying again until you find the best solution for your problem. I am one of those people who believe that no one will invent the wheel again. But there is an infinite number of ideas to reinvent and reimagine. We just need curiosity to find them, knowledge to understand them, courage to clash them with other things, and time to process all this information. But I'm not here just to present my existential questions and call it a day. I am also here to help you improve your visualization workflow. So today, I have an exercise for you. Grab paper, pencils, watercolor, markers, anything with color that you can paint or draw with, and visualize the first hour of your day. You have five minutes. References to all the books and more I talk about are below. Feel free to comment on what you think about all this. If you have two seconds, I would really appreciate if you could answer the questionnaire in the description. I will be back with more nerdy arguments about data visualization. This is Chart Bites. See you next time. Precisely the one Sunil. <laughs> that people. Pre Pretty strange that we repeatedly to help you improve you.